Hello and welcome to my show. Could you be more specific? I'm your host, Jonathan Still, coming to you by the way of the State Wall Podcast. And on this episode of Could You Be More Specific, I'm going to title it History Repeats Itself. And I'm going to touch on, obviously, the recent confirmation of uh, Brett Kavanaugh confirmed on the Supreme Court. And I'm also going to touch on Eric Reed and him uh, recently playing in his first game, being back in the NFL, and what all that entails going forward, especially with how we look at uh, your beliefs and the social dialogue that we have going on in our country. But I'm going to start with Brett Kavanaugh now. I know for people that kind of casually follow politics, they may have seen him in the news a bit. And I'm pretty sure, you know, it's more than enough information if you want to rehash all the things about him. I know he was confirmed 50 to 48. Uh, I know he's been uh, recently accused by three women of, you know, forms of sexual, anywhere from, from the forms of sexual assault to definitely also uh, sexual uh, inappropriate behavior overall. And one thing that's fascinating is, is that when someone is on a particular group's team, they usually fight for that particular person as opposed to the principles that they say that they stand by. And uh, that became very apparent with uh, Brett Kavanaugh. And it was kind of bizarre, his confirmation he- uh, hearing, uh, especially seeing some of the stuff that you know happened along throughout the course of um, his, uh, his procedure in terms of being confirmed and going through the procedural hurdles. And it was just, it was, it was a mess overall. And what's kind of more fascinating, it just, it further proves why I don't have an issue with the Republican party in the sense that they are who they are. They advocate for who they are and they fight and stand by it. The Democrats and people that are similar to them, uh, they are who they are, but they don't ultimately fight for who they are. They're not as disciplined. They're not as tough or mean. And when I saw what happened with his confirmation, I thought about that film, Ides of March, where there's a scene where Paul Giamatti pretty much sets up Ryan Gosling's character to not work for either side in terms of either of the Democratic uh, candidates. And he says, hey, this is the stuff that Republicans do. And he said, yeah, this is the stuff that they do do. And it's about time we start because they're tougher, they're meaner, and they're more disciplined. And when they have an agenda and when someone sits on their ticket, they fight and advocate and get whatever that particular candidate's agenda through. And Democrats don't do that. They didn't do that with Obama. They don't they didn't do it with Clinton. They didn't do it with Jimmy Carter. A lot of people may not know this and I could be wrong. I'll have to go back and look again. And I'm pretty sure um, I'll wait for you guys to kind of correct me if you guys think otherwise. But. Jimmy Carter almost had health care through and he got blocked by Ted Kennedy. He was a member of his own party. And this stuff happens. The health care that people complain about with Obamacare, as they call it, even though it's the Affordable Care Act, that would have been a much stronger bill had he had members of his own party that would have felt comfortable enough to vote for it. But they didn't because they played defense and they were scared of being voted out. And wouldn't you know, they got voted out anyway. But that's why Democrats don't poll well a lot of the time, because they don't they come across as wishy washy. And the Republicans showed you again this week they're going to vote and they're going to align themselves with their party. And that's what they're supposed to do. Do I agree with them on a lot of their policies? Absolutely not. For a party that talks about, you know, less taxes and less government, they definitely like injecting themselves in terms of government into your body, what you're watching, and stuff like that. But when it comes to you owning a gun or eating foods or doing stuff like that, they're all for it. So their their viewpoints on what's overreached from the government and what's not is very flawed too. And as far as what the Democrats go in November, and I know that was the big discussion, like, hey, you know, this is definitely going to be a galvanizing thing. The way you change these things is by going out and voting in, in and voting out these people, I know they put out a list of all the senators who voted for Kavanaugh's confirmation. A lot of them who are actually up, if you want to really change it, vote those people, particular people out. It's not just the Republican Party that needs a cleansing. It's the Democratic Party. The gains bought and paid for on both sides. It's not just one. If I owned a huge company and I was a multi-billionaire and I wanted to lobby for whatever I was lobbying for, I wouldn't just buy off one party. I'm buying off both in key districts, in key places that are going to fight and advocate for what I do. That's why sometimes people can't tell them apart. 
you know, it's like selling arms to, you know, you're arming the rebels and you're arming, you know, the resistance. Or I may have said that backwards. I'm sorry. But, you know, you're arming both sides. So you're, it's a win-win, I should say. For I know Susan Collins from Maine. I know she has an opponent that fun raising went up dramatically when she was voted. It, when she, it came out that she voted for, for Brett Kavanaugh. What's even more unfortunate is because there are going to be a lot of women that always feel like they not only they're not believed, but then, you know, even if there was a evidence that proved to be true, nothing's going to happen. And, you know, when I the reason why I'm calling this history repeats itself is because, hey, this happened with Clarence Thomas. It was proven what he did with Anita Hill. And he still got through. Judge George Bush Sr., that's who he wanted. And it didn't matter. The party in lockstep voted. Now, when it came to, say, President Obama, when he actually had the rare opportunity that presidents a lot of times don't get to pick three Supreme Court justices because of the death of Judge Scalia, Mitch McConnell pretty much, you know, denied it and said that he wouldn't allow for a vote to be taken. And because the Republican Party had the House and Senate, they weren't going to put that through. If the shoe was on the other foot and it was a Republican president with a Democratic Party, he would have had every lawyer that he possibly could have to find a way to, how can I executively put this person to fill this sleep? Because there's nothing in the Constitution that we know of, at least that I don't know of, that says you can have an unfilled Supreme Court justice and you let the next president pick. I've never heard of that. Ever. But they did that. And so, for the people out here that are really angry about his confirmation, you got, you're a month away from letting them know what your answer is. So... That's just some of the thoughts I had on that. You know, I've kind of tried to stay away from, uh, well, not stay away from, I've been aware of it, but it's like when you kind of already know how the game is going and other people are just late to the party, it's like, well, you know, that sucks for you, but, you know, it's like we were aware of this train. We've seen this movie many times, but I'm going to transition from that onto something that kind of ties in in a way, and I'm going to talk about Eric Reed Now, Eric Reed. Uh, was recently signed by the Carolina Panthers. I know he's uh, starting for them at safety, and uh, he officially took a knee, and he was the only player to do so. And I know he it was something that throughout the interviews when he got signed, I know he was wearing his um, I'm with Cap shirt at his introductory uh, press conference, and he gave a history lesson on next year about it being, I believe, 400 total years since, you know, uh, we the first slaves were brought here. And I could be wrong about the year, but he went through a whole thing from a history standpoint explaining uh, how black people were left out of health care, left out of the GI Bill, left out of the middle class, left out of a lot of the changes that benefited the majority of Americans who were not of color or, or any minority, especially black people. And so I know he wasn't sure what he was going to do. I mean, I don't know for sure if if previous topic I talked about with the Senate confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh changes anything, but if anything, you know, if it all it did was probably further confirm what someone like him and others like him think, I'm going to stay strong and stand in my truth. If the person that thinks differently from me feels comfortable enough to stand and walk tall in theirs, then I should be feel comfortable enough to walk and stand in mine. And that's what's not just, you know, something you respect, but it's, you know, admirable in a way that they're not allowing people to dictate how they're going to view things. And the Republican Party is letting you know that a lot of the people throughout this, you know, Fox News bubble, you know, make that very clear. You know, so throughout all this, the stuff that's happened throughout the, you know, these past two years, especially with the President Trump and what he's done to kind of weaponize the anthem and make it a, cultural, you know, defiance of athletes to not pledge to something that's not for them, even though that this league participates in paid patriotism, it's it's done what you could have hoped it would do if you're President Trump. And if you're someone on the uh, right side of things with how you view the protests, you, most of those people do know what it's about. 
they just don't like the fact that you're you're coming out and saying it. It's the same thing why, you know, they got mad that LeBron wrote a post about how much he loved black women. And when Issa Rae said what she said about, hey, well, I'm happy he did say that, but I don't know why they view, you know, black love as white hatred. Because every time we say something positive about each other, they tear it down all the time. If we're doing something negative about one another, they're all for it. We have no problem with it whatsoever. Matter of fact, they'll promote it and sell it if they can. But but that's how it's always gone. And so that's why you should just be comfortable in your own skin and just do what you're what you're advocating for. And I think Eric Reed having the opportunity to be back in the league and to represent himself and the causes that he's behind very well is admirable. I know the owner, uh, David Tepper, of the Carolina Panthers, is not the biggest fan of the president. So some people felt like that kind of played a part in it. I know he just had a big interview, I think, on CNBC, because like, he's a multi-billionaire, and they were asking him about some of the stuff from a political standpoint. And he was just upset because he was like, hey, these are, are private citizens that have a right to make their voices heard. They do a lot of work in the community. If this is the one particular issue that they work on in the community that you don't like, then that's your problem. Because he feels like most players in the NFL are great advocates and they are great ambassadors, not only to the game, but to the communities that they're representing in the cities that they play for, which is true. But he's only one of a handful of owners that will say that, uh, that are in the NFL. So, so that's something that moving forward, especially when we look at commercialized uh, messaging and how we interact with each other, that's going to be something that we're going to have to look to to bridge and deal with. I am proud of Eric Reed, the fact that he's, even if he didn't kneel, to me, his message was what it was. His beliefs didn't change whether or not he takes a knee or if he doesn't. He's made his positions very clear. And that's something that going into November, people got to think about. What side do you want to represent? What kind of country do you want to live in? And if you're comfortable with the way it is and it's only going to be beneficial to a certain group of people, that's fine. You know, I don't knock you for that. But just be honest about it. And I think that's what this Trump era has done. It's it's really, you know, let you let you know you've revealed yourself. So now we can't pretend like we don't know what's going on. But uh, I know it's pretty somber, but those are just some of the things I kinda of wanted to talk about. I want to thank you guys for I listen to the show. I want to thank D, all the work that he's been doing. Um, looking forward to recording more of these soon. Definitely look for him and some of the new stuff that he has coming on the podcast. Um, I'm looking forward to putting out some more shows and more content in the future. So, again, my name is Jonathan Steele. Thank you for listening to Could You Be More Specific. Coming to you, by the way, the Stay Well Podcast. Hope you guys have a good one and stay safe.